Hi all. My session today I'm going to deal with a priori algorithm. So let me tell you a brief definition of a priori algorithm whereas we are not going to see much about a priori algorithm in theory aspects. Whereas we are going to see a problem in a priori algorithm and how to solve it. How to generate a candidate's item set and a resulting set that is L1 and L2 and L3 and even L4. So it goes off. So a priori algorithm, it's an algorithm for frequent item set mining and association rule learning over relational database. It means it's a collection of items bought together by the customer. So now here comes a very important concept called minimum support. So what is minimum support? It's nothing but minimum support count would be a count of transactions. So it would be 60% of the total number of transactions. This 60%, this minimum threshold is given by the user. It's set by the user. So if they've given only uh, minimum threshold or support threshold to be 60% and you have to calculate, the, uh, that is you have to see the number of transactions through the number of transactions transactions and through the support threshold you can calculate your minimum support so how you will calculate the minimum support so minimum support is equal to number of transactions 5 into your support threshold that is 60 by 100 equal to 3 so a minimum support is very important for you in a priori algorithm because with this minimum support count only which would be the count of transactions you have to scan your database and you have to decide whether this item occur frequently or not so you have to decide whether this item occurs frequently in your uh, resulting or not by making this minimum support count if your frequent item set is less than this three then you have to prune that item set so we'll see this detail in the uh, forecoming sessions uh, and now so here we are going to see about the original table. So here you have a five transactions that is 300, T200, 300, 400 and 500. Here for T100 you have six items bought here. You are not supposed to read like monkey. You have six items bought here where is M, O, N, K, E and Y. For T200 you have six transactions that is uh, six items have been bought together where is D, O, N, K, E, Y. And for 300 it is M, A, K, E. For 400 it is M, U, C, K, Y. And for 500 it is C, O, O, K, I, E. So these are all the item bought in this transactions. Got it? So, so this is going to be my original problem. So my very first step in my a priori algorithm is I have to count the number of transactions in which item occur. Okay, so I've already told you each could be considered as one item for each transaction. So I'm going to calculate how much time all these items have been bought. The number of transactions for each item needs to be calculated here. So when it comes to M, you have to check how many transactions in how many transactions is M item have been bought. So M it have occurred in T100 and it have occurred in T300 and it have occurred in T400. So I M have occurred in three transactions. Likewise O it have occurred in um, T100, T200 and then T500. So it have occurred twice. So likewise again it have occurred two times that is in T100 and T200. In 300 and 400 there is no any item called N. So it have occurred two. So likewise you calculate from M to I. Whereas I if you see here it have occurred only in one transaction that is T500 whereas for the remaining you do not have any item called I. So T500 have only I. So T500 uh, transaction only have I so it will be one. So for all the items bought in your original problem, you have calculated the number of transactions these items have occurred in your problem. So why I have given this tick mark and this cross mark here? So here comes your minimum support. I have already told you your minimum support is 3 here, which is set by the user or um, support threshold will be given by the user. So you have to calculate your minimum support with the number of transactions into your support threshold, which will become 3 here. So for this problem, it is 3. For problems, it differs like 2, 4, 5. That depends upon the transactions and depends upon the problem. Fine. So here, so M have occurred 3 which is equal to 3 and O3 and N is equal to 2 which is less than my support count. So I need to prune this N and K have occurred 5 which is greater than 3 and E have occurred for 4 times which is greater than 3 and Y have occurred 3, uh, thrice which is equal to support count whereas D, A, U 
C and I all are lesser than my minimum support count of my problem. So I'm pruning all this. So by scanning my, uh, that is by scanning my uh, database, I found the number of transactions for each item bought. And for after calculating this and this number of transactions for each item bought is called the generation of candidate item set. Here C1 is nothing but the first generation of candidate item set. So after finding this number of transactions for each item, so you have to compare the C1 candidate item set with your database. So which is your database here as of now and this is going to be a database. So you have compared with the minimum support in your database and you have found that these items are needs to be pruned that is need to be eliminated. So after eliminating that we have got only M equal to 3, O3, K5, E4 and YE3. The remaining all items which have the support count lesser than 3 are removed here, are pruned here. So this resulting set is called L1. So the resulting set L1 for the corresponding candidate item set 1. So now my next step here is I'm going to generate a C2 from L1. So from this L1, I'm going to generate a C2 that is candidate item set 2. So how am I going to generate a candidate item set C2? Okay, fine. So now you come here, you all know that your... L1, you have got these items which are equal to or lesser than, uh, sorry, which is equal to or greater than your support count. So now how will you generate your candidates, uh, candidate item set 2? So your candidate item set 2 is a combination of two item sets or the two items which occur frequently. So from my resulting set L1, I found these are the items which have bought more, uh, that is more times, that is which are greater than my minimum support. So when I'm going to find the combination of two items, so how will I uh, find it, how will I generate an item, candidate item set C2? So it will be like this, so M, O, and it will be M, K, combination of two, M, E, M, Y, and now here it will be O, K, O, E, O, Y, and now K E and now K Y and now it's E Y. So like this only we have generated a candidate set C2. Candidate set C2 has been generated like that. I've directly put in my problem. I've just worked out a simple worked out I have given here because you can understand. Because if you straight away see the problem, you might feel difficult how this combination of item set have occurred. That is C2 have occurred. This candidate item set 2 have occurred. So it's they have given L1 self join L1. So I've made a join here and then I've generated a candidate item set 2. Now what I'm going to do is like I'm going to scan my database, which is my database. My original problem is going to be my data set database. So I'm going to scan my database for count of each candidate set. So I'm going to find whether these are all frequent item set in my problem or not. So that is what I'm going to do it, do now. And that is going to be the whichever satisfies will be in the resulting set 2 that is L2. And now here MO. You can also find how many times this MO have occurred in your problem. So MO have occurred only once. The remaining all you do not have MO combinations. So it occurred only one, so I've given one here. So next comes the MK. So MK have occurred here and here and here. So three times it have occurred. And for ME, it have occurred only in T100 and T300, ME have occurred, so twice. And whereas MY, it have occurred in T100, in T400, that's all. So it is twice. So likewise, for each item set, two combinations of item set, you're finding the number of occurrences, the number of transactions, how many transactions it have occurred. So there is a support count here. So uh, as we saw in your uh, first step, here also you are comparing it with the support count. You are comparing your candidate key with the support count. So obviously, which is lesser than three, all lesser than three, all items will be eliminated and which is equal to or greater than your support count will be taken into your resulting set two that is your l2 so mk is three and then your ok and oe is three and then your ke and ky is three so likewise you have found your resulting set l2 fine so now my next step so as you all know next step is going to be generate c3 that is the third candidate item set from l2 got it okay fine so how will you generate this? So as you all know, like uh, your uh, generation of candidate set C1 is nothing but it will be a single items. 
as you all know these will be a single items whereas for l2 you have a combination of two items whereas obviously you can guess your combination of three items is going to be in your resulting set l3 and the generation of candidate item set 3 will have the combination of two items fine so how do you find it so the thing is i've already uh, just made a worked out here uh, i've already worked out here see here so i've made the i'm making a self join of l2 so like here you have done l1 self join l1 i made a join of l2 with l2 so it will be like m k and ok so it will be like M K I have repeated twice, so it will be M O K, and then it will be M K and O E. Whereas here you have got when you are comparing your first and third one, you are getting M K O E, where it has four items, which is not into the or which cannot accommodate into your candidate three item set. So it will be eliminated, and then you will go to M K E, and then M K Y. Got it, and then O K E, and then O K E again. It's repeated, so I'm taking only once, and then uh, O K Y. Got it, and then uh, you're going to compare it with O K E, which is already there. Fine, and then O uh, E K Y. Sorry, O K Y, and then finally K E Y. That is K E Y. Got it, and here comes a very important concept here. So when you're generating item set C three, I uh, from L two. This is your C3, actual C3 from L2 you have generated. Here you have to apply a a priori algorithm. So what is a priori algorithm property here? All non-empty subsets of a frequent item set must also be frequent. It means that you have to check all the combinations have occurred in your problem or not. For example, if I'm taking MOK item set, see here you have to check for MO first. First you have to check it for MO. See here. Uh, here you have got you have got m o m o only once here itself actually it's not satisfying support one but fine so you'll check for ok also so ok it have occurred thrice but even though it have occurred it's satisfying minimum support this combination this m o combination is not satisfying your minimum support then you have to see this combination m k so m k it have occurred three times got it even though those two combinations have occurred thrice but this mo subset mo subset have occurred only once which does not satisfy your minimum support count so it will be automatically eliminated got it and then here mke so if you look for mk first so you'll go for m K E if first subset is M K so we look for M K so it have been three times so M K is for three times and if you go for K E so it will be like K E it's like uh, four times it have occurred so it have occurred four times when you are going for M E so here and here only two times which does not support which does not satisfy your support count here so this will also so this combination will also be proved. When you are going into your uh, L3 resulting set. And then finally uh, MKY also you can see. So MK and KY and MY. All the combination of subsets we are seeing here. All the combinations of subsets we are seeing here. So MK if you come, if you see here. So MK is like you have got it for three times. Fine, good. And then if you are going for KY, uh, good. Three times you are getting. And then if you are going for MY, only once twice so twice you have got wherever this does not satisfy your support count here also you have to prune it okay we'll see for likewise you have to see it for other things also we'll see it for k e o k e so you have to see the uh, combinations o k k e o k k e and then e o so if you see in your problem so o k will be i'll write it here because uh, OK, KE and EO. These are the uh, subsets of OKE. So if you see for OK, we have got good. Three times you have got. And then if you see for KE, good. It's more than three. So it's four times. And if you are seeing for EO, good. Three times it have occurred. So all the subsets are satisfying my minimum support. So a OKE is going to be one of the things which is going to be in my resulting set L3. Got it. So likewise, we check for OKE and KEY. It will not support the minimum support. 
So obviously your final frequent item search you have found through your a priori algorithm is nothing but your item set OKE. Your frequent item set is OKE. Got it? And there's also a, another simple example I've given here. I just found this. Uh, the thing is like suppose if you want to have a set of three items say uh, ABC, ABD, ACD, ACE and BCD and you want to generate an item set of four items. So it will be very difficult to make all the combinations and check all the minimum support. So in this case what you can do is like you can just have a look, uh, look at the two sets having the same first two alphabets. So these two are having the same two same first two alphabets and even this two are having same alphabets whereas this is not having the uh, any uh, other item so if from that itself you can come to a conclusion it does not occur frequently so these two combinations and these two combinations two so c and d have been bought with a b that is it means like it have occurred frequently and d and e have been bought with a c it means like it have occurred frequently whereas none of the items are bought with b and c Got it. So what you can do is like you can take the two set A, B, C, A, B, D and then you can combine it A, B, C, D and then here A, C, D and A, C, E you can take it like A, C so you can put the D and E in your item set. So in general you have to look for sets just having the last alphabets or the item difference. So it's a shortcut but if you want like okay I might go wrong then you can go for this combination and then you can generate your four item set that is the fourth item set but in our problem in this problem you do not generate l4 you just stop it with l3 not even l3 yeah you stop it with l3 you do not generate any four combinations of item set good fine uh, so i hope you all have understood a priori algorithm thank you